In this video, I will explain how to perform chunk swaps in Minecraft 1.12.2 and how to get asynchronous observer line. So in the video description, you will find a word download for this world. And if you want here, then you can just press this button to get teleported to a certain glass platform. Okay, um, it teleports you to this glass platform right here. And um, from the chunk swap, um, the first thing you want to do, you want to turn on the permal loader. So you will need a permal loader of this trick so if i flick this thing then it will load the permal loader and i can see it if i enable the chunk debug tool in, in carpet mode then i can also see it so if i um, look at where chunks are loaded i just loaded this line right here and it goes to the world diagonal here on the diagonal we have these chunks loaded now and they form the permal loader so the first thing you need is a permal loader the second thing you need to do is you need to have mob switches for hostile mobs ambient mobs passive mobs and uh, squids because um, for the trick to work, you need to disable all mob spawning, and I will explain later why. Okay, um, so um, currently I have 138 hostile mobs, 77 uh, passive mobs um, or, or bats. Um, like, like I have uh, disabled all the mob spawning by just having a lot of mobs in lady chunks, and like there are other YouTube videos explaining you how to make uh, mob switches. Okay, after we've turned on the formal loader, the second thing we want to do is we want to press the, the button with the grid here. If I press this, this will load a large cluster of chunks. So um, if I press this, and then look at the chunk debug screen, then um, you can see that it now loads this entire area of chunks. It's um, roughly 8,000 chunks big. It's a 90 by 90 area of chunks. And after you've loaded this area, you will um, want to wait for um, an autosave because um, you don't want to load all of these chunks. You only want to load specific chunks in here with a specific cache. So now you can see how it unloads. And then we see that only a few chunks remain in here. And the few chunks which remain are the cluster chunks, and these are important. They are important that these are loaded because they will create a certain kind of lag which we require for the, uh, the bug to work. Okay. And after um, you have uh, loaded in the cluster chunks and loaded in the grid, one thing you want to do is you want to relock. So I will quickly do that. Okay, I have now relocked, and after you lock back in, you will also need two other players lock in at a different place. Namely, over here, there's a command block uh, which says TP to unload platform, and you will have to have two players lock in at the unload platform. So I now locked in with uh, another player at the unload platform. This right here is the unload platform, and we have a third player over there. And you need all three players to actually uh, perform the chunks of this method. And the player who is right here needs to um, walk against precisely this cobblestone wall and then uh, relock at this position because um, the player needs to be in a specific part of the player chunk map. And this uh, gets set when he relocks at this position. And then, other than that, this player, after uh, logging back in, just walks up to this uh, iron crusher plate and then waits for the other player to go to the beacon tower, which we will show right now. So um, if now the two other players at the unload platform are ready, then the player at the blast platform here can start um, creating the invisible chunk and going to the beacon tower. So the way you do this is um, before you go to the beacon tower, you have to flip this lever. And after you flip this lever, you have to fly in before the next autosave occurs. Um, so I will now flip the lever and then I will fly in here. Um, and uh, if you don't fly in there before the next autosave occurs and don't flip this lever, will actually crash your game if you try to go near this interruption. So uh, you would better flip this lever. And what this lever will do is will create an update question which creates an invisible chunk. So um, right here we have a chunk which is invisible. So if you go down here, then you can see right here one of the chunks um, doesn't send any um, packets to the players. And this is an unpopulated chunk. And in the video description, I will uh, link another video um, where I explain how you um, get this invisible chunk and what they do. Um, but they're uh, unpopulated. And over here we have a large beacon tower. And the chunk with the large beacon tower will be the chunk in which we uh, perform the chunk swap. And uh, if we reload the chunk with the beacon tower on the async thread, then it will populate the invisible chunk, and then the invisible chunk will become visible. Now, um, over here we have a safe setting setup for the invisible chunk, because if you want to use this contraption multiple times, then you um, want to keep the population flag of the invisible chunk. So you can just flick this lever and it will safe state the invisible chunk. And after that, you um, just pick up some stained glass. You need 36 stained glass to operate with contraption and go here. And um, what we will now have to do is the players at the unload platform need to flick the lever and go through the iron trap door. Where, um, and after the player went through there, player at this platform needs to place stained glass, two layers of stained glass above the beacon tower. And um, I will now show you a video clip of a successful uh, chunk swap. Uh, this will be attempt number two.
Okay, now it worked, now it worked. Okay, now you see the, the stained glass disappears here um, because we got a chunk swap and got to the state. But also you can see that the invisible chunk has now become visible. So if I fly down here, then you can see the chunk. And this chunk is in on the editing thread. And also we got over here now um, got, um, this kind of observers will now be um, blinking on uh, the editing thread. Okay, um, so I just tried to record two Microsoft screens at once, and it turns out that if I do that, then my frame rate becomes complete garbage. So I also wanted to um, give another video clip where I show what you need to do where the frame rate isn't complete garbage. Um, so um, what the player at the Android platform needs to do, he needs to align against the fence, relock, and after relocking, he needs to walk over here. And then uh, once both players is ready, the player at the Android platform flicks with lever, and then walks through here as fast as possible and then tells the player at the other platform that he should start placing the glass. And as soon as the other player at the under platform tells, uh, has finished going through the iron trap door, the, the player at the beacon tower places the glass. He needs to place the glass uh, quickly because it needs to all happen within the left bike which the server line at the um, under platform for this. So this is what the player does. And um, if you then carried it out, like in the video of the horrible frame rate that you just saw, then um, this glass will turn into ghost blocks and it will disappear again and the invisible chunk will become visible and you will have an ASIC observer line. And with the ASIC observer line, you can then do all the interesting exploits, which I uh, have shown in the previous video and which I will also show in a few future videos. Uh, yeah, but anyway, the, the only successful chunks hope you will see right now is in a video with horrible frame rate. And, uh, if you want to see a more fancy video about chunk swaps, you will have to wait for Exxon's video. So um, I will now explain a bit more what is happening when you perform a chunk swap. Okay, so a chunk swap is when we load an already loaded chunk. And um, if you only have a single thread, then that doesn't really work because the hash map which stores the chunk um, checks uh, whether the chunk is in the hash map before it allows you to load it. Um, but the hash map for chunks is not uh, multi-threading safe, so if you use multi-threading, then you can trick the chunk hash map to load a chunk which is already loaded. The way you trick it is that you have one thread trying to check whether a chunk is loaded, while the other thread is performing a complicated on the chunk hash map which confuses it. So for example, one operation you could do is you could resize the chunk hash map, and uh, this is what Kuhlman used two years ago to get uh, like uh, chunk swaps in the end. Um, but in our setup, we actually um, just unload a chunk with a specific hash to confuse the chunk hash map so that it doesn't find the chunk with the beacon tower in it. Okay, and we have to do several tricks um, to actually um, make the um, async thread, which gets start by the stained glass, to still live when we unload the chunk. So um, in our setup, we play stained glass um, by players. And when the stained glass gets placed, they start a new thread uh, where they check for beacon blocks below themselves. And uh, usually if you place stained glass when the thread is uh, very short and uh, stops very shortly, and it stops way before we get to the chunk unloading phase, because like um, after the player phase, um, the game first continues processing everything else which has to do with players, and then it does mob spawning, and only then does it go over to chunk unloading. And um, usually the stained glass thread is uh, over before we get to chunk unloading. So we need to um, find ways to extend the lifetime of the async thread while also speeding up the main thread. So um, we can extend the async thread firstly by placing beacons below the stained glass. They slow down the, the async thread. So in our uh, case, we placed um, um, almost 5,000 beacons there or something. Then another thing we can do, we can uh, load uh, cluster chunks. So the cluster chunks are chunks which have the same hash as the chunk containing the beacon tower. And this uh, makes it so that whenever we try to get the chunk containing the beacon tower, we first have to iterate through all other um, cluster chunks before we um, can actually find the chunk containing the beacon tower and this slows down the async thread even more. And then another trick to make the async thread last longer is that we don't just schedule one thread, we don't just place for a single glass block, but we actually place uh, 36 glass blocks and uh, so we schedule multiple threads. And um, in the uh, beacon code, like in part of a beacon code that gets one on the async thread, there is a synchronized code block and um, Different threads cannot execute the synchronized code blocks at the same time. Like if two threads want to execute it at the same time, then one thread has to wait. And this means that the different threads actually slow each other down. So um, the first thread will finish pretty quickly, but it will slow down the other threads so that the other threads have a longer lifetime. And with this twist, we can extend the lifetime quite a bit. But to actually um, get to the chunk unloading phase, we also need to make sure that we speed up what happens on the main thread. 
So to speed up the main thread, the first thing we do, we try to keep the player phase as short as possible. And the way you do it is by not sending unnecessary play packets. So um, if you perform a chunk swap, then after you have placed the last stained glass block, you should not do anything. No player should move around the mouse. Like any mouse movement will send packets to the server, which the server needs to process and which uh, slow down the game. Um, and you shouldn't um, walk around. Like uh, after you place the stained glass block, you just don't move at all. And then the player phase has minimal size. And um, the next thing we do is we use uh, mob switches for um, hostile, passive, ambient, and water mobs. And this um, reduces the amount of time the game uh, spends in mob spawning. And if we combine all these tricks, then we can make it so that the async thread lives long enough to actually reach into a chunk unloading phase. And then we have uh, some point in time where we are unloading a chunk on the main thread while um, the async thread is still alive. And then we can get the chunk swap to happen. And uh, once we have the chunk swap, we have loaded a chunk on the async thread. Now, if you load any chunk, uh, it will try to populate chunks which are adjacent to it in the negative x in that direction. So if we perform a chunk swap on a chunk and have an invisible chunk next to it, and uh, then the invisible chunk will get populated because an invisible chunk is just an unpopulated chunk. So if we perform a chunk swap on a chunk here, then the chunk next to it gets populated, and this will also happen on the async thread. And this will then place a bunch of liquid pockets or other blocks, and you can uh, use then observers to observe them, and then you get the asynchronous observer line. And that's basically how it works. Now, uh, if you want to make your own setup for chunk swaps, then uh, you will probably do it in a different world. So you need to adapt the uh, setup to your world. And um, the first thing you should do, you should find out in which chunk you want to do the chunk swap. Um, the second thing you need to do is um, for the particular chunk for in which you do the chunk swap, you need to find a suitable uh, cluster of chunks. Uh, in the video description, I will link a tool for which you can find suitable clusters um, for, for any given chunk. So there's um, a script in the video description which you can download and uh, execute. And in this, you can enter the chunk where you want to perform a chunk swap. And you can say how many cluster chunks you uh, want. I recommend a hash size of 8,000 and uh, 1,500 cluster chunks. And then it will um, tell you the positions uh, where you should load the chunk loading grid. Uh, so right here is the cluster chunk finder tool. Um, the first thing I would recommend is putting the hash size to 8,000. This just says how big your chunk hash map should be when you do it. And uh, I find that 8,000 is good. Then uh, render distance uh, depends on your server, like uh, most technical servers have a render distance of 16. Um, then you need to enter the block coordinates of your spawn point. And then here you want to enter the chunk coordinates of your glass chunk. So this is actually an important number. So like, for example, if we want to maybe uh, do a chunk swap with a glass chunk with chunk coordinates 1000 in X and 150 in Z, then you can just enter this. Um, and after that, you want to um, say where roughly you want to search for the unload chunk and for the cluster chunks. Uh, the unload chunk can just be uh, nearby. That's not an issue at all. And uh, like you can just search here from the position where you have the unload chunk and then everything's nice, uh, near together and that's, that's good. Now the number of cluster chunks should be more than 100. 100 cluster chunks will not be enough to get a ch good chance of uh, chunk swaps. Um, so what you can do is you can maybe search for 1200, but should be enough. And the rectangle width you can make uh, pretty big, like um, like um, if you do something like 90, it's good. So you can maybe take a rectangle width of 90, and that's, that's fine. Um, and the search limit can also be um, quite a big, bit larger than uh, 5. Um, you can then also add coordinates for power loaders. So if you have a power loader in your world, which maybe goes from 100, 100 uh, to 500, 500, then you can tell it, and it will take that into account. Um, and like a permanent loader will like have always the same x and z coordinates because it's always on the world diagonal. So like, um, but it takes uh, also this into account. And um, after you've entered all the, your details, you can hit search, and then it will um, first tell you a position of an unload chunk. And once you know the chunk coordinates of your unload chunk, you need to set up the unload platform in such a way that when the player walks through the iron trapdoor, he unloads this specific chunk while not unloading any other chunks. That's the idea behind the unload chunks. And after a while, it will also tell you about the cluster chunks. So here it says it found a cluster with 1,200 cluster chunks, which ranges from the chunk coordinates 1,001, 151, to the chunk coordinates 1,091, 278. And in this, uh, you want to then set up your um, your chunk loading grid. And there is then also here um, a save to CSV, where you get like 
an Excel table which tells you which specific chunks in this rectangle are actually the cluster chunks. Because not every chunk in this grid is a, a in this rectangle is a cluster chunk. Only chunks with a specific hash are cluster chunks. And here is a Excel table which tells you which ones are cluster chunks. Here is also a save setup MC function and save cluster load MC function. And these are uh, functions which you can put in command blocks and they will place uh, dispensers and toppers precisely in the cluster chunk such that uh, you get um, automatic chunk loaders. Um, there's also a warning uh, down here which says upwards rehash will occur while player loading chunks. You can uh, completely ignore this warning. This warning is just there because of some deprecated code of some earlier version of a cluster chunk finder. This, this warning is not important. And then the third thing you need to adapt from our setup is uh, you need to find uh, new liquid pocket positions, uh, like these depend on your world seed. So if you build the contraption in a different location, then you need to also change the pocket where the liquid pockets get placed and um, build like a new contraption which creates an invisible chunk. But uh, other than that, you can use everything else like in the world download. Um, you can use a similar unload platform. You need to make sure that it actually unloads the chunk which the um, cluster finder tool tells you to unload and uh, you can build the same kind of beacon tower. And that is when uh, everything for this video.